Hey everybody, this is Pat, and today it's finally reached that time of year where unfortunately I'm going to have to pretty soon say the cat's in the bag. So as you can see, I've got the car set up here in the garage on top of its bag that soon is going to be, soon is going to be uh, being put over the car. Um, I actually set this up a few days ago. A few days ago, I went ahead and gave the car a full wash, um, just waxed it today, make sure it's all clean as well as vacuumed out on the inside. And it's best if you're going to do the wash before you put it in the bag, do it a few days earlier because what will happen is obviously you still have a lot of water that's in all the crevices and nooks and crannies throughout the car. And it's good to make sure that you get all that water to totally dry out, totally evaporate before you're going to put it in the bag. So last week I did take the car in to my dealer to make sure to have a full inspection done on the car. And they also did an oil change with all synthetic oil um, that'll last it for the next year. Uh, the last time it had that same kind of oil change was about a year ago. So with the number of miles I normally put on this car, which is usually only about 5,000 a year, uh, that's typically, you know, that, that'll work fine with letting it have its synthetic oil for a year. should not be any issue with it. So, and again, the dealer recommends that um, as well. Now, unfortunately, they weren't able to uh, let me in there and do any video during that time. However, they did allow me to go out into the service bay while I was up on the lift, and I was able to take a look at a few things underneath. And one of the things they showed me is that, unfortunately, both wheels on the right side, um, the, the rims, unfortunately, had been bent. And I do recall hitting a pretty bad bump at one point earlier this year on a terrible road we have here in Michigan. And it did, unfortunately, cause, uh, a, you can actually see, they were able to show me a pretty good uh, bend, and I'll provide a photo of that as well. Uh, luckily, it hasn't caused an issue yet. Uh, there might be some shops that might be able to bend that back out. I'm going to look into that next year. Um, unfortunately, to, if that doesn't work, the only alternative is to buy new ones. And of course, there aren't, aren't any new ones out there. You're going to have to find one used, somebody that might be able to sell one for you. So that's something I might be looking into next year. And if I do, I'll let you guys know. Now, while I had it at the dealer, they also were able to install that uh, support brace that I tried to put on earlier this year. They were able to install that for me. In fact, when I brought it, uh, they had to have me come out and show them how to put it on because this was some, some part they'd never done before. And uh, so I was able to point out exactly where it goes, showed them some photos of the, the way it should look from a car that had it on it before from the guy I bought it from. And uh, they were able to put that on there. Now, unfortunately, I've not really noticed much difference yet. I haven't driven the car a whole lot since then. I expect I'm going to really see a difference once the car is actually on the freeway on longer drives, more rough roads, you know, a chance to see how, the st how stable the car is after that. So again, that's something I'll report back on next year after I have some more chance to drive the car and test it out. So the other thing I did uh, recently with the car, I got the tank filled up. While I was there, I put this stable uh, fuel stabilizer in the car. Um, if you just look at the instructions on here as far as how much you need to put in there, basically one ounce of this treats up to two and a half gallons. So uh, being we got about a 12 gallon tank, so I, was, I basically had about you know four ounces of this, a little over four ounces that I put in um, to cover this. So you put it in when you're at the gas station, and then you fill up the car. I only had about a quarter tank in at the time when I got to the gas station, and I went and just filled it up, and the drive a few miles home mixes it up, and then you should be good. And in my case, about five to six months that the car is going to be sitting. So definitely consider this. Now note that this is kind of a small bottle, and there's not a whole lot left because I used some of this last year. You don't want to get one of the big bottles because this stuff, you can't let it sit around for too long. It defeats the purpose if you actually have this stuff being old as well. So you can go a couple seasons with it, but then like I say, there's almost no left and I'm probably gonna just toss this out. So always get a small bottle like this, so that way you don't have it sitting around and using really old fuel stabilizer in the pre, you know, in subsequent years. Now something else you might notice here that I did is that the windows here have a slight crack in them here. They're not totally closed all the way up the top. That's something you wanna do when you store the car because you wanna make sure that air can still flow through the car. You don't want it totally sealed up. Now, uh, when I get it in the bag, uh, I have the uh, desiccant bags that I put under the car. Now, some people put them in the car too. I didn't do that last year and it didn't seem to be any issue. The car was totally dry inside. There was no issue with that. Um, but whether you have the desiccant bags or even put the car in a bag like this at all, you always wanna make sure you have a little bit of a gap there. Another thing you want to make sure to do is to make sure your tires are overinflated to, to uh, help eliminate any flat spots that'll be on the car while it sits. So that's something I'm going to do next year to make sure to go through and go to each, each one of the tires. I'm going to try to fill them up to at least 35 if I can. Um, normally you keep them about 28. So get them a little lot fuller than that and that hopefully reduces the flat spots. Something else I wanted to show you that I did, if you still have the, the bumpers on your car, 
I found this uh, restorer that works really nicely to allow the plastic to look better. Uh, if you look at it now, it comes out a lot shinier than it was before. Um, this thing here called a plastic restorer from Car Guys uh, works really well. I've used this over you know, every once in a while, like every few weeks I put this on, and it just makes it look a lot nicer and a lot shinier. So something to consider if you still have the bumpers on your car. Next thing we're going to do is hook up the uh, battery tender. Now, as I noted in one of my earlier videos, uh, the design of the Prowler makes it really easy to be able to set this up because there's a nice opening right underneath the car. The, the uh, battery is right in the front of the car, so it makes it very easy to do. So what I use here is this uh, battery maintainer here. This is the one I typically have been using the last few years. Um, works very well, and again, it's so simple to put this in. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down here, and we've got the, uh, the clamps here. This one here is going to go in your positive, and the black one here is going to go. You can attach it to a piece of metal within, you know, near the battery. So we're going to go ahead and put the red one in. Again, the nice thing is that I can just take it and I can just slide it underneath here, and then. I can reach through here and basically just put it, pull it up through that hole there. And then once you get it through, I've got this bar in the way, so I need to get it around that. But once we get it there, we can just go ahead and hook this guy up. Now again, the uh, tender is not plugged into the wall yet. You don't want it plugged in yet. Okay, so I've attached that one. And then the negative, pull that up. And go ahead and attach it to some metal here. Right about there. Should be good. And then we're all set. So we have to see if we can plug it in. And I'm gonna go ahead down here, get it set so I can see the controls on it. Make sure you see the lights. And go ahead and plug her in. And let's see here. There we go. So all three lights came on at first, and then the yellow light came on, which is the one you want, because that's the one that's saying that it's now charging it. Now, when it's fully charged, the green light next to it will come on, and it'll start pulsating. So when you see that, you're done. So I'm going to come back later on and check on that, but this may take a few hours to make sure it gets fully charged up. So now the next step here is to get my car cover put on here. Once we get that all in place, then the bag is next. Okay, now before I actually start zipping up the bag, one thing also we need to do is we need to put these desiccant bags uh, underneath the car. Um, now, some people put them inside the car as well. Um, I didn't do that last year. I put them just in, on, underneath it, and that seemed to be fine. I didn't have any issue with moisture inside the car. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and put them uh, under the car. Now, in the instructions that come with it, I went ahead and ordered a new set this year. Actually, you know, I got, actually bought them um, from Carbag and actually bought this new set of, uh, of bags. Actually, it's, uh, two bags containing five bags each, so 10 bags total. Now, uh, I could have gone ahead and taken these bags, the old ones that I had, and I could have actually just put them in the oven, try to bake them to get all the moisture out of it. Uh, even the instructions on here suggest you buy new ones, that the safest thing, way to go. Now, they might be saying that because that way you keep buying more from them and they'll make more money that way. But I went ahead and just bought new ones this year just to be safe. Uh, once I have somebody I can work with more closely to show me the baking process, make sure that's done properly. I might do that again next year because I don't want to keep buying these constantly. That'll be costly over time. So, but anyway, now we got to go ahead and put these in. Okay, so now I'm ready to get the top of the bag all the way over the car and start zipping her up.
Now you may notice that once I have the bag on, there's a lot of extra bag in front here. And that's because the size that I got, which they call M2 or medium two, is you need this one because of how wide the car is. Uh, the Prowler is wider than average compared to its length. So I had to get the wider one uh, to make sure that it would fit properly, but that means you get a lot of extra bag in the front. So not a big deal. Just make sure, just be aware that's going to be there. And the next thing I need to do is make sure that the cord that I've got for my charger is going to go through right at the base. You know, it's going to be right where the zipper ends. So the zipping is actually on the other side. So I'm going to start doing that one next. Okay, so here's the zippers. There's actually two of them on here, but you just need the one. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this guy started to zip up. So at this point here, you can see that I've got the bag um, zipped up here, but I'm getting up to the point where the battery tender is coming through. And so I'm gonna to need to make sure that this cord is all the way at the very end. Okay, so I got it all the way down here to the end. I got it zipped all the way. As you can see here, I've got just a little bit of gap. So I just gotta make sure that the cord is all the way to the very end. And then I'm gonna zip it all the way to make sure there's no additional hole to get any moisture through. Okay, so there we go. So now the cord is just going through at the very end of it so there wouldn't be any gap there for it. And we make sure that our tender is still running and still on yellow. So that's basically it. My cat is now in its bag for the winter. I'm gonna miss her terribly. Uh, I know a lot of uh, Fellow Prowler owners don't like to use these bags because they can't look at the car all year. Uh, I'm gonna miss her, but this is the safest thing to do if you live in a winter climate like I do here in Michigan. Uh, all the moisture and stuff that's gonna be in this garage, you know, driving cars in and out, it's just gonna get messy. And so having this on here really did help when I took it out of the bag this past spring. Um, everything was so dry inside and it was just perfect, ready to go. So definitely would recommend getting one of these things. It's a little bit of a, effort to get it on here but now this is my second time doing it it's not too hard once you get used to it so that's it for this year hopefully i'll have some more videos coming up later uh, hopefully we can get some other people to do some videos with me so we might still have some coming up in the future until then i'll see you next time